Right, hi there. So today we're going to be taking a look at my Sealy Mighty MiG 100. This is a very basic flux core wire welder. So it takes a wire which has got a flux core inside it, which uh, when you weld leaves a covering of um, flux over the surface of the weld, which you then have to clean off, pretty much like stick welding. This is pretty much stick welding with wire feed so, like I say, it's a pretty basic machine. It says Mighty MIG, but this is not a MIG welding machine. It never will be. It can't be a MIG welding machine. Um, so, it's got a power button, minimum, maximum button, which uh, you've got 55 amps minimum, 90 amps max. You've then got the wire feed speed here. And that's pretty much it for the controls. Uh, this one I have actually modified slightly. The internals are as standard. But um, I put a better earth clamp on. And I also put a DINS connector down here. So I can remove the earth cable and put a longer one on if I want to. Off my uh, other machine that I have. And then also the other modification I made is, you can probably see, sticking out the top here, there's a 4.5 kilo reel of wire, just here. Um, now I've done this modification like this because although you can fit a, one of these spools on its side in here, I actually burnt the motor out on the wire feed because there's Laying on its side, there's too much friction, and yeah, in the end, that caused it to burn out in quite a short period. So, I had to replace the motor. That's basically the only trouble I've actually had with this machine. Um, it's pretty simple the um, spool holder I made, it's just literally a piece of angle iron at the bottom here, then welded onto a piece of flat steel with a round piece of tube welded to that and then on this side to tension the spool is just a spring and then I've got a rubber grommet which comes from a uh, grommet for you know electrical um, outlets so the uh, wires don't get cut through and that's pretty much it and that just tensions the spool on here but yeah, that's the modifications I've done to it anyway, which don't actually affect the welding in any way. The best upgrade you can do is to put a decent clamp on, um, which has preferably got um, copper contacts on, so you get a good contact on whatever you're welding on. That does actually help with the quality of the welds. So the reason I'm making this video is because a friend of mine is thinking of buying this and I thought I would just show him uh, what it's like and how it welds. So we'll go do some welding with it and I'll show you some of the welds that I've done with it and then I'll give you my conclusion on this video. Um, I've actually had this for nine years now so I know it quite well. I don't use this machine all the time now. I've actually got a MIG welder. But it's not a quality machine, but it's a machine that does the job. I'm not saying it's a bad machine. It's uh, done a heck of a lot of work, this machine has, over the years, fixing things. Um, so if you want something just for sticking metal together, which is like, you know, reasonably thick metal, like uh, probably about 2 mil and over. You can weld thinner, but it does take some practice. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad welder. You know, it's lasted all that time, so yeah, it definitely lasts quite a while. So yeah, we'll get over to doing some welding now anyway. Right, so here I'm welding on the minimum setting, and the wire speed is down to one. And this is thin sheet steel. So here um, 
I'm doing small spot welds on top of spot welds. Um, really, I'm going too fast. Really, you'd want to leave a few seconds in between the spot weld. Um, that means then the workpiece won't heat up as quick and it won't warp. Um, really, you'd want to do like a centimetre at a time and then leave that area to cool down for a few minutes and go to somewhere else if it's um, a uh, bigger piece of material that you're doing. Also, um, when you do the um, short welds, you really want to clean in between um, finishing and starting. That way you'll get a better weld quality and you won't um, get slag inclusion in the weld. So, as I say, I'm not a professional welder. Um, I learnt, learnt myself how to weld, so take anything I say with a pinch of salt really. Alright, this is 3.5mm steel, just doing a butt weld. That comes out quite nice. Um, the wire speed was on 6 and it was on max on the uh, amperage setting. So it's 3.5mm steel again, and the settings were the same, it was uh, on 5 or 6 for the wire feed speed, and on max amperage. Right, so this was just uh, laying some beads down to see how well they come out. So I don't want to bore you to death with the welding, I did do a lot more, but uh, I'm going to leave it here. Okay, so let's take a look at the um, welds on the fin steel. So this was the first welds that i done, and obviously you can see that I burnt through all the way. This was on wire speed 1 and on minimum power setting. Uh, second bead along here, not too bad. Obviously if you were going to do this on a car bodywork panel you wouldn't weld the bead in one go. You'd weld like a centimetre at a time, go different spots so you don't warp the panel. But um, chances are you're going to blow through so you need to be very careful. And it does take a while to get used to it. So on the second welds, as you can see down here, burnt through the sheet here, up here, welded okay, grind that back, it might be okay, you know, obviously like I say, you do a little bit at a time, but yeah, it will do thin sheet steel. And then this was probably the best weld here. Not too bad. Obviously there's a lot of smoke when you're welding with this and it is kind of hard to see where you're welding sometimes. And it's quite quite hard to see the puddle as well. But um, it's not too bad. Did burn through on the end there because the heat was building up as you can see. That's the reason why you wouldn't want to uh, weld too much at a time. But being these are just test pieces. It just goes to show that if you go slow, 
do like a centimetre and stop for say 10 minutes to let the uh, material cool down. You could potentially, you know, weld some panels up, sheet metal panels with this. Just a matter of technique, um, just stacking the weld rather than just doing one continuous bead. <coughs> but yeah, uh, you can do sheet of steel if you wanted to with this. Um, so onto the thicker stuff. Um, Alright, so here's a couple of beads that I've done. Not too bad, nice smooth beads there. Pretty consistent. <coughs> well, a couple on here. The thing that you get with it though a lot is uh, you still get flux along the uh, edge of the weld which can be hard to get off, even with a wire wheel. And then I've just done some welds in there. Here's a butt joint, which welded quite nicely. This is on 3.5mm steel, so you're not going to burn through it. So that came out really well. It definitely is a lot better on the thicker material, I would say. As you can see, there's all that spatter that you'd need to clean off. Inside corner joint, which isn't too bad. Right, so just quickly show you the type of things that you can do with it. Which it's really good for repairing things, or just, you know, like I say, sticking bits of metal together. This is a spade bit dirty. Um, this is a spade which I repaired a while back now with the flux core welder here and um, it literally, the wooden handle snapped on it. Uh, I needed, I still needed a spade. I had this piece of metal here which was a shock absorber off a mountain bike and literally just welded that straight on as you can see. Not too bad, but you know, it's a bit crusty, but it's held up. I've done quite a lot of work with it since, and it's you know, it's done the job. And that's what this welder is about. You know, it's you can repair stuff with it, you know, you can stick bits of metal together, and uh, that's what it's good at. Yep, so conclusion on this welder uh, it's not really for sheet steel. Uh, if you're thinking of doing car body work, I, I mean, I wouldn't even consider it really you'd have to be on like the tightest of tight budgets but I mean since these are selling for 130 pounds now uh, I think that's a really overpriced for this machine it's not worth 130 pounds if you can get it for under 100 I'd say yeah if you want to get it but it's kind of false economy because it does one it does one process and that's all. So then you're just stuck with having flux core wire with it. And then you might want to upgrade in a few months time. That's if this doesn't put you off completely from welding. Um, but when you can consider that you can get a MIG welder for an extra £45, if you was paying 130 for this, for an extra 45 you can get that inverter MIG welder that I was talking about, which you can do flux core on if you want to um, you can also do MIG welding steel mild steel wire you can do aluminium welding on it stick a spool of aluminium in there and some argon gas and you can weld aluminium if you want and then you've also got the uh, stick welding feature on that as well so you know you've got two machines in one you've got a stick welder and a MIG welder in one and it works really well I'll put the link to that video in the pop-ups up here I'll try to I'll link it down in the description as well just in case but yeah I mean honestly I wouldn't particularly buy this if you can save up a little bit extra and get uh, that inverter MIG weld lot I was saying about I think it's probably the cheap well it is the cheapest on the market anyway that's for sure but I wouldn't say it was bad I've had it for two years and it's it's pretty much been the best welder I've had. I've had quite a few welders, MIG welders and that, and it's definitely the best one that I've had. Um, it's definitely better than a um, Clark welder, 
or a Sealy Mighty MiG 150 <coughs> for a lot of the, uh, the um, cheap Draper units as well. Um, definitely a lot better than them. But um, yeah, it is a good welder, but I would definitely consider saving your money up and buying something slightly better because uh, you'll just there's just more scope for learning in the future with different welding processes I think with a MIG welder <coughs> so yeah I'll put a link in the video link up there and I'll put a link in the description just in case uh, please comment down below please give the video a thumbs up please subscribe would be much appreciated and thanks very much uh, take care everybody and I'll see you next time bye